y'all like history lessons, right? Y- y'all like reading about records that are broken. Well, let's listen to some records that the Baltimore Ravens broke. The least time spent trailing in the first 10 games of a season over the last 40 years. Let- let's look at these teams and how long or really how little they were trailing for and what their records are. The 1984 Dolphins, they only trailed for 14 minutes and 46 seconds through the first 10 games of the season. They started off 10-0. Uh, the 1998 Broncos, they only trailed for 27 minutes and 7 seconds through the first 10 games of the season. They started off 10-0. The 1990 Giants, they only trailed for 43 minutes and 42 seconds through their first 10 games of the season. They started off 10-0. And the 2007 Patriots, they only trailed for 51 minutes and 3 seconds through the first 10 games of their season. They started off 10-0. But how about those Baltimore Ravens? How about those 2023 Baltimore Ravens? Well, they only trailed for 28 minutes and 46 seconds through their first 10 games of the season. What's their record? 7-3. and three. I've seen a lot of people saying that fans are overreacting to the Baltimore Ravens loss. No, fans are not overreacting at all. The reason why fans are so upset is because they see this pattern with the Baltimore Ravens. They, they see what the Baltimore Ravens have done over and over and over and over and over. Because it, it, it seems to be the same thing. It just continues to happen. And this was one of our biggest fears heading into this game against the Browns uh, was that the Browns, good opponent, good team. We know we blew them out last time, but again, context, they didn't have their starting quarterback, and that makes a big difference, as we know from personal experience. But um, in this game, uh, the Baltimore Ravens with a lead, a big lead, a significant lead, a two-possession lead, and – they just couldn't get it done. Anyway, getting into this game, because, you know, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts about the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns game yesterday that we all watched, witnessed, and we're like, oh, boy. These Baltimore Ravens, um, when they, again, my biggest fear yesterday was that when the media, when everybody props them up, they prop them up, oh, yeah, best team in the league. This team could beat anybody. And they, they still can now. They can. But when the media just keep propping them up, everybody props them up. Oh, man, the Baltimore Ravens, best team in the league, best team in the AFC, best team in the NFL, da 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 It seems like they just they don't know how to take the compliments. It seems like they, they get all like, oh, us? We the best team in the league? Oh, why, thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, it's so, it feels so nice. And then they fall flat. They fall flat. And they have done this for years and years and years. And this is not an overreaction when people are upset. Now, I do still feel like these Baltimore Ravens are a Super Bowl team. I really do. But they got to get this stuff right. And it starts again with the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, nobody expected the Baltimore Ravens to go undefeated this season. Oh, I know I didn't. Maybe, maybe some of y'all might, may have. But never expected the Baltimore Ravens to go undefeated this year. Um, I think that's extremely unrealistic. We know how the NFL is. We know how the Baltimore Ravens are. So uh, it just... That's too far-fetched. But um, the self-inflicted wounds, the self-inflicted wounds continue. And it's not even just that the Baltimore Ravens lost. I mean, you're never going to find a way where, oh, man, well, oh, man, I, I love that game, but we lost. I love how they played, but we lost. But we didn't love how they played. And they lost. And you see so many different areas of where they needed to improve, but they lost. I saw with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson uh, in yesterday's game was not a uh, good game for Lamar Jackson. Um, and we're going to get to his numbers in a little bit. But some of the things we saw from Lamar Jackson yesterday. Now, we know the offensive line yesterday, they, they weren't good. Or they were not very good in pass protection at all. But Lamar Jackson, there were a lot of times when he would really just hold on to the ball for way too long. Uh, and you got to... Live to play another down. Now, there was one play. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness it was a penalty. Um, it was, I think, it was in the second half of the game uh, where Lamar Jackson is looking, looking, looking. Uh, he, he had to scramble out of the pocket because it broke down. And at the last second, he just threw it up into the end zone. Browns picked it off. They picked it off. And I said, oh, man. Um, but they called a uh, defensive holding on, I think that's when Odell Beckham Jr. drew a defensive holding on somebody, I believe, uh, in the end zone. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Because at that point, like, and I know, I get it. Lamar wants to make a play every single play, and I love that. Love that about him. Uh, but sometimes you just got to live to play another down. And you can't, not necessarily force the issue, but, yeah, sometimes you just can't force the issue. 
especially in a game like that. Because had that not been a penalty, oof. And I don't know if maybe he saw the penalty flag and he was like, oh, you know what? Let's just go for it. But, um, yeah, that was, that was scary. But he did throw two interceptions. Now, the first interception in the pass intended for Rashad Bateman. Oh, my goodness. Um, and he's saying, he's saying that's on him. Now, we know, like, Lamar Jackson, if he's thrown an interception before and it's on the player, then you'll see the way that he talks to the player. And you could tell that he'll be frustrated or whatnot, and he'll be telling the player, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that, da, 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 da. But he said, oh, that's on me. Uh, Rashad Bateman looked like he just went on a go route. Rashad Bateman just, he hit it. Uh, but I think Lamar Jackson thought maybe Rashad Bateman was doing a comeback route or something like that. And uh, Rashad Bateman, he went deep. Lamar Jackson, he threw it short. And easy interception for the, uh, for the Cleveland Browns. Super, super easy. Uh, the second interception uh, was more so just a great play by number 54 in the Browns. Great play. Lamar Jackson was getting ready to throw the pat record. Uh, Lamar Jackson threw the pat record. Uh, number 54 jumped in the passing lane, tipped it up. And what happened? I think it was Newsom that came down with it. Uh, and he came pick six, pick six, and that just changed the game. And it is crazy because the Baltimore Ravens in this game, they started off hot. Started off hot. They jumped out to what a seventeen three lead. Uh, then they, it, it, I think going in the half was it twenty four nine going in the half? No, no, no. I think it was seventeen nine going in the half time. But um, they jumped out to a seventeen three lead. So they were. They were hot coming out of the first quarter. They were like, oh, yeah, this is the, the most points the Ravens scored in the first quarter since 2019. And we all remember that season and how that was going. And I was like, oh, okay. Ravens off to a nice start. Let's get it, baby. We got to keep it going, though. Because 17-3, like, that's still a close game. That ain't no blowout. That's still a close game. And then second quarter, nothing. Nothing. They, they didn't do a thing. Nothing at all. And so, okay, well... Um, and th- th- things just stopped. They, they they just stopped for the Baltimore Ravens and the Browns. The Browns continued to hang around all game yesterday. Ravens got – they had a 14-point lead, but obviously uh, they squandered that, and it, it, it disappeared pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Lamar Jackson, 13 for 23, 223 yards, uh, one touchdown and two interceptions. Um so, yeah, it was just unfortunate, man. Uh, they did end up missing some points. I know Keaton Mitchell, he had a drop. But let's, let's, go, let's go to the running game now. Speaking of Keaton Mitchell, um, see, this is where coaching, they let me down big time. Um, because Keaton Mitchell, obviously, we know his first carry went for, like, what, a 39-yard touchdown run. Huge run, crazy run. It was like, all right, there you go, Keaton Mitchell. Let's get it, baby. Come on, man. Let's go. Keith Mitchell continuing to do Keith Mitchell things. His dad was in the building over there smiling, proud pops. I was like, okay, I feel you, pops. I know how that feeling is. But second half, Ravens were like, Keith Mitchell? For what? Why? What would be the point? What's the reason? Why would we use Keith Mitchell in the second half of the game? He only exploded for that huge touchdown run in the first half. He only exploded for that huge uh, screen pass. That went crazy earlier on. Why would we use him in the second half of the game? What would be the reason? And they didn't. They didn't. King Mitchell had three carries. One of them was a touchdown. One of them was the um because we keep Mitchell. They they got him that touchdown. But then the problem, in my opinion, was that they tried to get too cute with Keaton Mitchell after that. Because they did the whole, the fake reverse, I think, to either Gus or to Duvernay, to somebody. They faked the, they faked the hand off to him, and then they ended up giving it to Keith Mitchell. It was sloppy from the jump. Um, and I felt like, especially in the second half, especially late in the second half, especially like in late third quarter, f- early fourth quarter, I'm like, I'm calling, where's Keith Mitchell at? Because just his presence alone, his presence alone would have changed stuff. Because the Browns, they saw what he did. They saw what he did to them because he did it to them. And they saw that, but the Ravens were like, you know what? We're not even going to play the mental part of football. We're just going to do something different. We're going to go against what was working. And it's, why? Are you saving him for the Bengals game or something? That's the only thing I could possibly think of. But I, then I was thinking, oh, is he hurt? We ain't hear no injuries. We ain't see him limping or anything like that. Is, is he hurting or something? Is his hamstring bothering him? We heard nothing about it at all. So I'm like, why? And like thinking about it now, it's just so frustrating because why? Like, I don't know if it happened to y'all yesterday. After that Ravens game, like I, was, I wasn't mad or nothing like that. I wasn't like, oh, huffing, puffing, I'm going to blow somebody's house down. No, but 
didn't even want to watch no other games after that. Now, it did not help that the other games that came on after were not very interesting. But I didn't even want to watch no football after that. I was like, mm, football, hey, I don't, I don't know, whatever. So I did, I did not watch any more games after that. I was just footballed out. Because um, that game against the Browns is just like, it's just like, really? That was, really? That's probably the best reaction, really. But with Keaton Mitchell, they just stopped. And he, like, he's shown to you what he can do, and you didn't even try. Because, again, his presence alone would have helped Lamar Jackson out. Uh, it would have helped the Ravens out. It would have just helped them out a lot. Shout out to Odell Beckham Jr., though. Odell Beckham Jr., shout out to, shout out to Lamar. That was a great throw, a uh, great catch by Odell Beckham Jr. Um, and the Yak, too, of course. And he took it to the house, did the bird flu and everything. Odell is well embraced uh, in Baltimore for sure. Um, but it just it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. With Rashad Bateman, I, I thought this was going to be a game with a sort of breakout game for Rashad Bateman this year. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Mark Andrews, he usually goes off against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, that's usually the, like his, his go-to team when he want to rack up some stats. Two catches, 44 yards. Two. <laughs> Zay Flowers, uh, he was very involved, heavily involved. He, actually, I didn't even realize that this was the record. Uh, he broke or either tied or broke Torrey Smith's record for uh, most catches by a rookie, by a Ravens wide receiver rookie, and that record is 50 catches. So Zay Flowers is either at 50 catches or he just passed 50 catches, one of the two. Uh, so shout-out to Zay Flowers. But I know Lamar missed him on a, on a deep pass. Uh, so that was unfortunate because that would have been a touchdown. Oh, man. It was, it, was, it was right there. And I know with Lamar, I know he's been missing on some deep passes. Um, my opinion, I think it's very important that the Baltimore Ravens still, they take the shots. though. They keep taking the shots. Don't stop taking the shots. Don't stop. Now, <laughs> if you got an offensive line that can't really block for nothing, uh, then you may be limited on the deep shots that you can take. I think that's what's been the most frustrating part uh, is that, it's, it's like a, a an imperfect storm for the Baltimore Ravens. Because um, it's like Lamar, if he, he missed a deep shot, then offensive line as the game goes on, a lot of times they just start breaking down more and more. And you don't even got time to really take deep shots like that. Because uh, he'll wait. You know, y'all know he'll wait. Uh, sometimes him waiting, it, it'll be great. Sometimes him waiting, it won't be so great. Um, Ronnie Stanley, speaking of offensive line, Ronnie Stanley is hurt. Some people saying he looked like he re-injured the same ankle or knee or whatnot. Who knows? We'll see. I'm sure we'll hear some later on today from John Harbaugh in his post-game presser. <coughs> Marlon Humphrey. Um, I'm hoping that it's just his hamstring, but I know a lot of people are thinking it's Achilles, and we know Achilles would be season-ending. Um, so hopefully that's not the case. I think we'll know about that later today. Um, and if, even if it's not later today, I think it will be later today because it usually is the very next day. Um, but we will know early this week what their statuses are. Whew. Wow. And it's, oh, that would be very unfortunate um, for both of those two. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. We ain't going to trip yet because we don't know yet. Um, but let's, I guess we'll go ahead and make that transition to defense. Defense started off the game amazing. Um, the, well, not necessarily run defense because run defense, literally, literally all game. Them runs up the middle, the Browns are eating them up every single time. And I th Jerome Ford had over 100 yards rushing. Let's say he had uh, Jerome Ford has 100, 107 yards on 17 rushes, average 6.3 yards a carry. Running up the gut every time they ran up the middle, they would get it. And Ravens, they they missed a lot of tackles too. There would be times where they had him hemmed up, and he would break off break off a couple people, keep moving. And Ravens were missing tackles on against the tight ends. Remember David Njoku had a couple long passes. Ravens just miss, missing so many tackles. Deshaun Watson, he would get loose. They would have him wrapped up in the backfield. They would be swiping at him. Deshaun Watson go, uh, y'all ain't touching me. Then go take off. And those killed the Ravens all game because they all came at the worst times. All of them. Especially at the very, 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 very end of the game. So, it's unfortunate, man. Um, but on defense, they started off hot because – Early in the game, I know some of y'all may have forgotten because it seemed like it was so long ago and so early into the game that it was like, did that really happen? It doesn't seem like it. Kyle Hamilton. <coughs> Kyle Hamilton. He got that beautiful pick six on the second play of the game. Shout out to Kyle Hamilton. Um, so it was like, it was, it was like, oh, it's about to be one of these games? Okay. That's how you start off? Oh, yeah. yeah all right, hey, Ravens, let's go, baby. But, yeah, y'all know how the rest went, obviously. Um, and they just – it's like Deshaun Watson – in the first half, 
his numbers were so bad. I think he was like six for twenty or something like that, something crazy like that. <coughs> Excuse me, but then in the second half, I don't think he had not one incompletion. I don't think he had not one incompletion, not one. And it ain't like he was just taking a bunch of dink and dunk passes. He was taking some shots. He didn't have not one incompletion. I don't believe in this whole second this whole second half of the game. How does that happen? Adjustments, adjustments. Deshaun Watson and Browns, they adjusted. The Baltimore Ravens, they didn't. They didn't. And they could just never get, get stops. Early on in the game, in the first half of the game, the Baltimore Ravens defense, they were bending, but they were not breaking. They only gave up nine points. I'm like, okay, cool. We've seen that a lot throughout uh, this season. Sometimes with the Ravens, they'll, they'll give up some little plays here and there, but they'll hold the teams out of the end zone, and that's the most important thing. You keep them away from scoring points because you could give up all the yards you want to. You can give up all the yards you want to, but if the team don't score from it, hey, and you got more points than them, obviously. They can have more yards. Like, look at the Steelers. <laughs> like, look at the Steelers. Steelers get, they, they give up more yards than they get every game. But if they got more points, okay, y'all can have the yards. They, we got the points. That's how they feeling. But Baltimore, they just started breaking. They started breaking. And it, it was unfortunate. So, bad game. And it's crazy because we're looking at this game, and what Ravens got? 30 points, I think. They scored 30 points, but again, oh, they scored 31, excuse me. But it's still like, again, bad game from the offense, but he scored 31 points. Well, they scored, they scored 24 points because Kyle Hamilton. But game of inches, man. You know, Justin Tucker, he had the field goal blocked because Ben Cleveland, the guy, like, went right past him and. Block Justin Tucker field goal. So, it's it's like, man, game of inches. And the Ravens lost by two points. Game winning field goal. Had they made that field goal and everything else went the same, um, going into the end of the game, it would have been 34 to 30. Browns would have had to get a touchdown. So, that would have been a lot more pressure on them. But, yeah, we know how that went or how it didn't go. Um, but enough for me. Like, I, I know we, we could talk about this game all day and every day. But it's always nice to hear from an opponent how they felt about how the game went, how they felt about uh, these Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns. And right now, we're going to do just that. What's up, Engraving fans? Now, look, I done calmed down from a live stream. I know I'm in enemy territory, and I don't want to troll you any further than I've already trolled you before. So, you know, I'm going to tone it down a little bit because, you know, I got to show the homie respect. But just talking about this game a little bit because Engraving wanted me to drop a little a little breakdown of what I felt like I saw in this game. Um, the Browns made a lot of mistakes, I felt like, early in this game. And I think the Ravens did a good job of capitalizing on top of them. Um, and that was kind of the story of the game, in my opinion. I thought that the Browns really started out slow, real sluggish offensively. Deshaun was placing balls well, but they weren't being caught or maybe you weren't getting enough depth on the sidelines. There's just little stuff like that that's kind of been an issue with the Browns and Deshaun Watson since he's been back here. Um, and the defense, we know that that first drive, we, we struggle with them first drives for whatever reason the Cleveland Browns do. Um, but the second drive, you know, the run with Keaton Mitchell, kind of that kind of stuff was really affecting the Browns in a negative way. But, but, but I think this is, in my opinion, the birth of the Browns as a true AFC North team. I know when we talk about AFC North football, the Browns don't usually fit that description for the last few years. Well, since coming back and since the formation of this division, when you talk about tough, hard-nosed, smart football, that's what most of the teams in the AFC North have been, but the Browns have never given you that. But this was a resilient, tough game that the Browns gave you. And I think at the end, they just out physical a Baltimore. They were able to get what they wanted in the run game. They were able to get what they wanted through the air. They were able to get the clean pockets that they needed with Deshaun Watson. And if not, they were able to run the ball cleanly with Deshaun. And I think that ended up making the difference in this ball game for the Cleveland Browns. Um, you know, I don't know in engraving, you could let me know if Roquan Smith played on those last two drives. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure, but you know, let me know. I didn't see him make much of an impact in the last two drives. Um, but I think Jerome Ford really did a good job of being physical. That push pile at the end of the game really told the story of the game to me was that this Browns team was just willing to get a little bit more physical than Baltimore was able was willing to. And I think another series in this game kind of told the story of it, right? There was that part, there was that part of the game where James Prochet dropped that punt. Um, and gave the Ravens the ball, I believe, at the 11 or at the 10-yard line. And despite the fact that the Ravens got that ball at the 10, I believe it took like 12 plays for the Ravens to score and three penalties, all defensive holding on the Cleveland Browns in order to refresh those sets of downs in order for the Ravens to score the touchdown and ended up putting them up at 31. And I thought that that was a really good stand by this defense, their ability to kind of just stand in there and try to make something happen um, against this Baltimore team in a very bad circumstance where they felt like they forced Baltimore off the field and then you get a muff punt. Um, But Baltimore eventually scored in that at the like 12 plays. And then importantly, that's when Deshaun Watson kind of went vintage Deshaun Watson, went right down the field there to score because the Cleveland Browns, they needed to score in two minutes or less in order to keep that game close. It wasn't just enough that they scored. They needed to score quickly, and they came down the field, and they scored, and they came close to um, you know getting this game tied up. And then on the next drive, Lamar throws a pick six to tie this game up, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, momentum is in the Cleveland Browns' direction. So um, just the game of perseverance and effort by the Cleveland Browns, and I think – Despite the fact that they had multiple times to take themselves out this game, I think the Cleveland Browns did a good job of forcing their way back into this game by just being the more physical team in the second half um, and just being more willing to be out there making plays. So that's my kind of recap of it. And Graven, thank you for having me on. Appreciate y'all. And if somebody in chat can tell me, man, where was Roquan Smith on the last two drives? Hey, man. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. CJ used to show up in the moments, but I ain't know where Roquan was. Hey, great. Let me know, man. If I'm tripping, <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all. But y'all have a great day, man. So shout out to my guy, Quincy Carrier. Y'all already know who he is. He is the best Cleveland Browns content creator out there doing it. And one of the best just overall content creators uh, doing it. And congratulations to his Browns on beating the Ravens in Baltimore, too. I was hoping that I could pull out a broom and could do the sweep. We could do a nice little sweep, but... That will not be happening, at least uh, today, for these Cleveland Browns. Now, uh, the Baltimore Ravens move on to another team in Ohio, and that's the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'm hoping that we can pull out the broom uh, for them very, very soon. Uh, But anyway, um, we will keep you updated when we hear about Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley. Uh, And keep you updated on the events going on uh, at the Cleveland Browns. uh, Excuse me. No, got to move on from the Cleveland Browns. At the Cincinnati Bengals game, uh, especially shout out to everybody that will be attending the Punchline Podcast tailgate that we'll be at. uh, And everybody else that we'll just end up seeing at the game, too. And throughout Ravens walking, all that stuff. You know how it goes. We're going to have a good time. So I'm looking forward to it. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out.